everyone's Jackal Wolf back in all of the mod six to the sky with another five minutes. That's how I did it. Now, if you've been following along, you know that we are working our way through the quest book. Last episode, we did the storage tab and we did the, the classic storage and the not a vanilla tank quests, which were a lot of fun because I got to teach everybody how to make vanilla <laughs> chests and uh, barrels, but they are a quest on the list. So we ha actually had to do them, but we took the opportunity after that to make ourselves an infinite water supply. And then we use that water uh, with a barrel to make ourselves some clay. That's because we are planning on using a lot of clay in this episode because we're going to go and make ourselves a seared melter. Now, the reason we want a seared melter in our world is the next set of quests coming up is going to have to do with the meshes. We're going to use these meshes with a sieve to get ourselves a bunch of resources, some of which are going to be ores. If we use the melter and the smeltery, we can actually get more per ore than we can if we just run them right through a regular furnace. And that's going to make a huge difference, especially early on when, you know, we are manually grinding out these resources. Once we get up to, you know, something that's automatic, it may not make as much sense to spend a lot of time to, you know, focusing on ore doubling and things like that. But early on when we are getting each and every one ourselves, it, we want to get as much material out of them as possible. Now, Tinkers has really, really been updated for the 1.16 mod pack. Previous versions have allowed you to ore double with the seared melter as well as the smeltery. 1.16 has changed that though for Every ore chunk that you run through your a melter, you actually get 1.3 nuggets out of it. So that's about one and a third. Whereas if you actually build yourself a smeltery, you can actually get a full two ingots out of it. So that is true ore doubling. There are a couple other methods of doing it in the game, none of which are really easy to get early on. This is our very, very first chance to ore double pretty much right off the bat. Now, if that's the case, why are we bothering to make a melter instead of a smelter? That is because to make the smeltery controller, we actually have to already have molten uh, material in our world. And the best way to do that is with a melter. So to make a smeltery controller, we're going to have to pour molten copper over top of a seared heater. That means at least right away to start, we're going to have to make ourselves a, a seared melter. So to make a seared melter, we're going to need a bunch of seared bricks. To make seared bricks, we're going to need a bunch of grout. Now, this has not changed from previous versions. You've got basically two recipes to make grout. You can use a single clay ball with a single block of sand and a single block of gravel. That will get you to grout. Alternately, you can use a block of clay with four sand and four gravel. That will get you eight grout. Now, there's nothing really different about either of these recipes. There are they are all technically the same value of material, but if you're making just one or two bricks, your best bet is to use the ball. If you are making a lot of grout, you know, at once, then, you know, definitely use the block method. You'll save yourself, you know, quite a bit of time. Once we have our grout, we need to turn this into bricks. The easiest way of doing that is just to run it through a furnace, though we can actually run this through a melter as well and, you know, form bricks that way. This is our easiest early game uh, method of doing it. And there we go. There is a seared brick and this is just going to continue in the background. Now to make the seared melter, we are first going to need to make ourselves a seared gauge. That is going to be five blocks of glass and four seared bricks. Now we're going to take that seared gauge. We're going to put it into a crafting station in the middle spot with a small U of seared bricks below it. That's going to get us our seared melter. You can see it is called the first smeltery place above a seared tank or heater to fuel. So we can make ourselves a heater or a seared tank. I've always preferred the seared tank method myself. So to make a seared tank, it is simply a piece of glass surrounded by seared bricks. Now, once we use the melter to heat up and melt the ores, we're going to need a way to get them out of the melter. To do that, we are going to need a faucet. Faucet is very, very simple. It is three seared bricks in a small V shape. Now we're going to need something to cast the molten metal onto. We've got two options like previous versions. We could do go with the casting table. Uh, that is going to be seven seared bricks in a N shape. Or we can go with the casting basin, which is pretty much the exact opposite recipe. It is the seven seared bricks in a U shape. The casting table is generally meant for smaller items uh, like tool parts or ingots. Uh, the casting basin is used for full blocks. So depending on what you need, you pick which one that you're going to be casting into. Now that is basically all the parts we need for our first melter. What we're going to do now is we're going to go and set this up in our world. 
I'm going to go place down the seared tank first, and then I'm going to take the melter and I'm going to go place it right on top. Now, if this lights up, that means you have successfully placed it on top of a proper heat source. If for whatever reason this doesn't light up, that means you've got a problem with your heat source. Even though I don't even have anything in here to heat it, it's sensing it's on a proper block and that's why it's lighting up like that. Now, next we can go and place our casting table and then let's just place this guy off to the side, which is the casting basin. One of the things we can do is we can actually cast from any side of this uh, melter, which is, you know, makes things a little bit easier. I can, you know, have a bunch of stuff in here. I can say, okay, well, I need a little bit here for an ingot. Oh, but you know what? Let's get the rest out and we'll make a full block of it or vice versa, however it is that you want to deal with it. Now, to complete this setup, we're going to need to get ourselves a source of heat. I've gone with the sear tank. That means I'm going to have to use lava or a similar heat source uh, to heat up my melter. Now, there are a couple of different things other than lava, but lava is just, you know, going to be the easiest one that we can get, you know, in our world at this time. Now, I've already got a, a bucket of lava. I could scoop this up and put it in my uh, sear tank and this would work absolutely perfectly. The problem is this is my only block of lava or bucket of lava, and I actually kind of want to protect it. So we need to make ourselves some more lava. To do that, we're going to need something called a crucible. Now, there are a couple of different crucibles in the game. We've got the wooden crucible, which is what we used to make water last time. You can make lava in it. I don't recommend it. There's a good chance it's going to catch on fire. At least it has in previous versions. To make lava, though, we can make something called a porcelain crucible. To make a porcelain crucible, we are first going to need some porcelain clay that is crafted with a ball of clay and a piece of bone meal will each get you one piece of porcelain clay. We need seven of these and we can put them in a crafting station in a U-shape that will get us an unfired crucible. Now this is similar to the clay buckets where it is not usable in a unfired state, but if you go and run it through a furnace, you'll end up with a fired version of it that you can use, you know, in your world. And there you go. There is our fired crucible. Now, to make lava, we need to provide this crucible with a heat source. We can do something as simple as putting it on top of a torch. And you can see up in the top left corner, it says a heat of one. That This is basically the slowest form of you know creating lava. But like I said before, we've already got another source of heat in our world. We have got a source block of lava. So if we go and put the crucible on top, you can see it has now gone up to heat five. That means it is now five times as fast at making lava as it would have been as if we placed it on the torch, both of which are completely, you know, viable options, but I've already got the lava here. So it makes sense for me to be using the lava right away so I can make more lava quicker. To make lava, we basically got to take, you know, a couple pieces of cobblestone, one, two, three, four, that will get us one full bucket of lava. This crucible will hold four buckets, but it will never be able to hold more than four pieces of cobble at a time. This is automatable though. It's very, very simple. You can hook a hopper up to it and it will feed the cobble in. You don't have to do anything fancy like pipes, just something simple like a uh, hopper will work, you know, wonders with uh, getting this uh, cobblestone lava automated. Now, if we were going to be making ourselves a regular hopper, we would have to wait until we have iron in our world. But one thing that this mod pack has supplied us with is the wooden hopper, which is from the wooden hopper uh, mod pack. I like calling it a whopper because I, I know one other pack called it that and I I just think it's the, the, the probably the best name for it. But a wooden hopper is very, very simple. It is just a chest with five planks in the large V shape around it that gets you a wooden hopper. We can go place that over here. And then we can go open it up. It has only one input output slot, but for what we're doing here, there's only ever going to be one thing in here at a time. So it doesn't really make sense that we need, you know, five different input slots anyways. But you can see it's already fed the new cobblestone into our uh, crucible, which means this is going to continuously produce lava until this crucible is full of lava. Now looking up there, it looks like we've already got ourselves a full bucket's worth. So we're going to go scoop that out. This is good. This is going to get us lava, you know, maybe not infinitely, but right now it's going to be continuously filling with lava. So we can now take this lava, we can go put it into our seared tank in our melter, and this melter is now functional. Now, while I don't have any ores to cast in it, we can go open it up. We can actually put the clay in here for the moment, 
and this will melt down you know, into the uh, molten clay. Now, in previous versions, we were able to use the molten clay to make sort of temporary casts. Uh, that is no longer really available in this uh, pack, but what we can do is we can take the molten clay put cobblestone or stone or the, you know, stone bricks or things like that into the smeltery. We can go pour that molten clay on top of it. And there you go. We now have seared cobblestone. So this is another way of making seared bricks in that is you can pour molten clay on top of regular stone or cobblestone or stone bricks or things like that. And then you'll end up with a seared uh, version of it, which is really, really good. That works really, really well. But that is also going to be it for this one, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. There were no real quests in it, but this is a step that I felt we kind of had to do before we really got into the sifting and uh, the ores and all of that, because this is what we're going to need to make our smelter, which is what we're going to want to do right away so we can get ourselves some uh, ore doubling right from the beginning. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please think about leaving a like and a subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter at Jackal. Wolf. Also, check out the description below. There will be a link to my Discord page. I would love it if you guys stopped by to say hi. As well, there will be a link to my Patreon page. If you enjoy this channel, if you enjoy this content you want to support, stop by, check it out. There are a lot of great perks out there for all of my supporters. Also, I've been streaming on Twitch, JackalWolf77. I stream Tuesday nights, Friday nights, and Saturday nights, 8 o'clock Mountain Standard Time. So if you're looking for a chance to come out and chat with me, that would be a great opportunity to do that. But that is it. I'll see you guys next time. Good. Bye.